Welcome to Our Lady Lourdes Parish in Massapequa Park. I'm Monsignor Jim Lasanti, and we are celebrating today the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Thank you for joining us, and let's pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, the Lord be with you. With to better celebrate Mass, we look into our hearts and confess our sins. Mary is ever faithful and ever true for the times we have failed to live our faith in the same spirit of Mary. Lord, have mercy. We're called on to proclaim to the world that we belong to Jesus for the times we have failed to proclaim our oneness with him. Christ, have mercy. mercy. For the good we want to do, for the faith we want to put into action, but for the times we fail, for the sins of omission, Lord, have mercy. mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so we pray. Let us pray that we will join Mary, the Mother of our Lord, in the glory of heaven. All-powerful and ever-living God, you raised the sinless Virgin Mary, Mother of your Son, body and soul, to the glory of heaven. May we see heaven as our final destination, our final goal, and come to share with her in eternal glory. And we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. God's temple in heaven was opened and the Ark of his Covenant could be seen in the temple. A great sign appeared in the sky, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon beneath her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was with child and wailed aloud in pain as she labored to give birth. Then another sign appeared in the sky. It was a huge red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on its head were seven diadems. Its tail swept away a third of the stars in the sky and hurled them down to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman about to give birth, to devour her child when she gave birth. She gave birth to a son, a male child, destined to rule all the nations with an iron rod. Her child was caught up to God and his throne. The woman herself fled into the desert, where she had a place prepared by God. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have salvation and power come, and the kingdom of our God, and the authority of his atoned one. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. The daughters of kings are those whom you favor. On your right stands the queen in gold of offer. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. Listen, O daughter, pay heed and give ear. Forget your own people and your father's house. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. So will the 
king desire your beauty. Is your lord pay homage to him? They are escorted amid gladness and joy. They pass within the palace of the king. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life, but it's one in proper order. Christ, the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ, then comes the end when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death, for he subjected everything under his feet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste, to a town of Judah where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women. And blessed is the fruit of your womb, and how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears. The infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believe that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked upon his lowly servant, from this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel. For he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with Elizabeth about three months and then returned to her home. And this is the Gospel of our Lord. Thanks for being with us here at Our Lady of Lords for this Feast of the Assumption. And I want to point out we're back in the chapel. Why are we in the chapel instead of the church? Because happily today, while we are filming this Mass, we have uh, two, not one, but two 
uh, couples getting married in our church sacramentally, and we're delighted for them, and we pray for them, and uh, are happy to give up the church for their uh, happiness in celebrating their wedding. But thank you for being with us here to celebrate the Feast of the Assumption of Mary. And a couple of things before I get into the readings. Uh, I'm celebrating this Mass for many intentions, but one of them is for Sister Mary Angela Buser. Now, who is she? She's a BVM. The BVMs are Religious Community, Blessed Virgin Mary, based out of Dubuque, Iowa. And she was the principal when I went to grammar school and one of the most formative and influential people in my life, a, a religious woman who uh, had class, dignity, uh, certainly authority, too, in the way she ran the school, and at the same time uh, had a, a gentle way about her. Um, she was just a great, great lady and passed away recently at the age of 94, and I wanted to remember her. She visited me in my last parish at St. Thomas the Apostle in West Hempstead, and uh, we had lunch together. We went out to lunch, and it was great. But she said to me, you know, Jim, I, uh, I only knew of this later on, but she said, I didn't realize when you were in grammar school how often you were getting smacked around and uh, that a few sisters in particular were a bit brutal to you. And uh, uh, she said, you know, had I known that that was going on back then, she's talking about the 1960s, she said, I would never have permitted it. I just wanted you to know that and to say that I'm sorry that you went through that. Um, and I, uh, I thanked her for her interest so many years later, but I said, you know, Sister Mary Angela, um, interestingly enough, the couple of nuns who smacked me around back then uh, and the ones in high school who did the same, uh, to a person, not one of them stayed in religious life. They all left and married. So I said, so if you want to do some praying, I think you should pray for those husbands because God knows what they have to face in the future. So uh, Sister Mary Angela Buse, a great lady, wonderful lady in so many ways. And uh, when you think about what they were going through, right? They wore the old time habit back then, which couldn't have been comfortable. They were living in a convent with 25, 30 other women in small cells. And then they came to school where, in my case, there were never fewer than 50 students in a class, if you can imagine that. When we would have assemblies, there'd be 1,200 students in St. Thomas the Apostle uh, Parish School, and we'd have to sit two to a folded chair because there wasn't enough room. So this was something she coordinated and did a beautiful job. Sister Mary Angela Buser, a great and inspiring woman who I am absolutely certain the Lord is welcoming to heaven. Uh, my mom used to work with it too because my mother was in the parents club and they would work together. They had a great relationship, my mom, Cecilia, and Sister Mary Angela. So I was talking about Sister Mary Angela recently to my mom and I said she was really a beautiful woman in so many ways. I said, Mom, you know, you're so good. You're also a very beautiful woman. And my mother responded, you know, you're not bad looking yourself, kid. So this is great that I have a mother who affirms me and a principal in heaven who's praying for me. But now let's get to the readings, okay? Let's go first of all to Revelation. Revelation, what are we talking about here? The devil hates goodness, bottom line. You know, I found in my life that while we're all physically attracted to people who are good looking, for me, the most attractive thing about any person has always been the quality of their heart. When you meet someone who's genuinely good, and you know, down to their toes they have goodness, isn't it the most inspiring and welcoming thing? You wanna know that person better because they're so incredibly good. Well, the devil, hates that kind of person. The devil would like to destroy anybody who's truly, truly good. Well, who could be better than Jesus himself? And who is the Christ carrier, the Christ bearer, but Mary? So in this passage of Revelation, we have Mary who's expecting the child, and we have the devil in the person of the serpent longing to destroy the child so that all goodness will be destroyed with this Messiah, this promised savior. And the happy part of the story is that uh, Mary, is able to wipe away the serpent and to protect her child and to bring him safely into the world. But what this revelation story is all about is the fact that the devil doesn't want goodness to succeed in you or me. And so often enough places temptations in our lives to make us go afield, to make us go off the path that we should follow, to break our spirit of goodness and to embrace instead, he would hope, the path that leads to sin. You know, uh, I don't know if you had a chance to watch it, but you know on our YouTube program, personally speaking with Monsignor Jim Losanti, uh, some months ago we had uh, Jonathan Rumi, and he plays Jesus on that very successful series called The Chosen. But in the interview, he said something interesting. He said, I have faced a lot of challenges recently and, and uh, things that are obstacles in my life, and I know why. He said, as this thing catches on and more and more people, millions of people are watching The Chosen, the story of Jesus Christ, and he's playing Jesus, 
So he said, I know why I am often tempted to trip and stumble and fall. The devil's going to have an attempt at my, my goodness because he doesn't want us to succeed. And Jonathan's right. When you and I are good, when we're really living in the person of Christ, we can be sure that the devil will do his best to trip us up, to put our, us in the path of temptation, to cause us to want to fall into the path of sin. But I think we've got to keep in mind that we have a great protector. When we are inclined to compromise our goodness, when we're inclined to instead choose the temptation of sin, uh, that's the time when you've got to pray with all your heart and soul. Mary, just as you protected the child in your womb from the serpent, from the devil, so protect me. And she will do that. That's her gift to us. You know, people, I think, who don't pray to Mary are missing a great opportunity to have the greatest defender and advocate you could possibly have, the mother of our Savior himself. The devil wants us to fail. He's going to give you and me lots of temptation to guide us the wrong way. He hates our goodness, but our goodness is protected every time we put ourselves onto the mantle of Our Lady. And on this Feast of the Assumption, what better time to say, Mary, i got some major temptations going on in my life. But I know with you on my side, I can resist those and continue in the path of true goodness and true holiness. Okay, let's go finally to the uh, second reading before we get to the Gospel. St. Paul to the Corinthians. This isn't all that complicated. Adam, in his arrogance, Adam, in his uh, narcissism, decides, I know better than God. And for that, the punishment is the experience of death. Up until Adam's sin, there was no such thing as death. Death comes into the world through the choice for sin by Adam. But this reading says, ah, but we are so blessed, aren't we? Because Jesus comes into the world and eradicates the sin of Adam. And with the sin of Adam, eradicates death. By Jesus' death and resurrection, there is no longer permanent death. There's the promise of eternal life. Now, what has that got to do with you and me? I hope it's a reminder to us that death is real, but so too is resurrection. That our life beyond this life is not some nice idea to give comfort, but is real and is true. I don't know if you remember the historian Arthur Schlesinger, but he was a great aide to President John Kennedy. And while John Kennedy had the gift of faith and was a Catholic, Schlesinger was a nominal Jewish man but had no faith. And so in one of his final interviews when they said, you know, you're way up there in age, when you die, what do you think happens? And he said, absolutely nothing. We become nothing more than food for worms. I remember watching the interview and thinking to myself, thank you, God, for the gift of faith. Thank you, God, for the belief that this is not the whole story. That there is a life to come that, yes, death came into the world. And yes, death is sometimes frightening. And that's the sin of Adam. But that if you believe in the words of Jesus when he promises us, as he has in so many recent Gospels, but he who believes, she who believes, joins me in eternal life. He who eats this bread will live forever, the promise of Jesus. So that Arthur Schlesinger, I hope, now knows as he's gone to his eternal reward that, man, I was wrong. There's a whole lot more to life beyond this life than being food for worms. There's the promise of Jesus that is real, the promise of eternal life, the promise that death is not the end. I believe it, and I, I hope you do too. And I hope Arthur knows that reality at this moment in his eternal life. Finally, let's go to the Gospel, the Gospel of Luke. There's about three things I want to focus on, not too long, I promise. First of all, when you are overwhelmed by your problems, and who hasn't been, right? Well, we think, I can't go on, this is all too much, I can't cope. Um, there are a couple of ways of responding. Some of us turn inward and we get selfish and we're so consumed with our problems we can think of nothing else. But then there's Mary's response. Consider her situation, 16, 17 years old, visited by an angel, if you can imagine that, told she's going to be the mother of the Savior of the world, knows she's engaged to Joseph, who's not going to understand how she had a baby that has nothing to do with him. So if there's anybody in the world who has the opportunity to say, oh no, my problems are so overwhelming you can't believe and focuses on herself, it would be Mary. Instead, what does she do? She gets up after meeting with the angel Gabriel and travels the hill country, no fancy you know, highways like we have now, climbs over the hill country to Elizabeth because she says, hey, I'm young and vibrant. I've got a couple of burdens to carry, but I can handle them. But my kinswoman Elizabeth, my cousin Elizabeth, she's an older woman and she's having a baby she never expected to have. I need to go and to help her through her pregnancy. My point is there's no better way to get out of our problems, our sadness, our depression, the things that overwhelm us, than by going to do for other people. And that's what Mary did. 
There's a lesson here that we don't want to miss. A lesson that tells us that you can focus on yourself and turn inward, but that's never going to solve the sadness within. Or we can say, you know what, I've got problems, but there are other people out there with problems too. And I know if I pour myself out in service to them, I will be uplifted. And Mary does just that. That's one thought. The other thing I wanted to talk about was, how did she have the strength to do all this? Well, Elizabeth says it so well. Blessed are you who believed. And that's Mary's great gift to us. Look, I'm sure she doesn't always, in believing, understand everything. Look, this maiden, this Jewish maiden, could not have possibly understood what it means that she's going to be the the carrier of the Savior of the world. And I'm sure she could have involved herself with the angel Gabriel in many heavy-duty theological questions, but she doesn't. I believe that God is always going to take care of us. I believe, she says, that whatever you want of me, I'll do. She accepts the will of God, and while she might not understand it, as a woman of faith, she says, I know with God everything's possible, and I know with God that it's all going to be fine in the end if I just take my life and place it in his hands. Don't you and I have moments where we have to face the same challenge? You know, we can either try to control, manipulate, and handle our own lives all by ourselves, and that's always going to lead us to failure, or we can take all of of the things we face in life, and they're manifold to be sure, and hand them over to God or to our Blessed Mother and say, look, I can't handle this, but I know with you everything is possible, and that if I trust in you, it will all come to the good. She had that kind of faith, and it's an invitation to you and me to do the same. Final thought. I love in this gospel so many things, right? We have Mary's prayer, that beautiful prayer, I'm I'm the handmaid of the Lord. That's all beautiful, right? But before that, I love what Elizabeth says. The moment you walked into my house and called my name, the baby leapt in my womb with joy. What does that tell you? I think it says that in the presence of Christ, in the presence of his mother, our proper response is the same response as John the Baptist. He leapt with joy in the womb. You can't truly be in the presence of God or the Blessed Mother and be a dour, sour down person you got to have hope you got to have joy you got to bring that sense of wow how amazing is it we have the blessed mother in our life how amazing is it we have the savior of the world jesus who is our savior and god what i'm saying is what i've said to you guys so many times before but i believe it i don't understand how anybody can believe in the blessed virgin and believe in her son and still be a person who is filled with sadness and dourness and has a negative view of the world Look, I know sometimes all of us are overwhelmed by our problems, but at the end of the day, we have an occasion and a reason for enormous joy. And that's Jesus himself and the Blessed Mother as well. The baby, knowing that in in its house was Mary and Jesus, the Savior of the world, the baby leaps with joy. The same response of John the Baptist, leaping with joy, should be part of your journey and mine, to be filled with a joy that aren't we so blessed To have as our mother, the Blessed Mother, who's not only Jesus' mother, but she's your mother and mine too. And to be brothers to the Savior of the world, Jesus himself. I ask you to take a good look at the way you and I live our faith. When people see us, do they see a natural joy? Do they see that we are so delighted to be in the hands of God? And that 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 faith of ours enlightens everything we say, everything we do. Do people see joy when they meet you? Do they see joy when they meet me? I hope so. Because joy is a natural response. The baby leapt with joy in the womb of its mother because he was in the presence of the Savior of the world. One final thought, and it has very not, very little to do with the readings, but I wanted to talk about it. Uh, one of our guests over the years, both in past shows that I've done and more recent shows, was an actress named Catherine Hicks. And if you ever watched that show, Seventh Heaven, which was so popular for so long, Catherine Hicks played the mom uh, of those children. And I mention that because we're old friends. She's a great lady, a wonderful actress, and a very real and practicing Catholic. But we got into a dialogue because she'd been watching the Mass and listening to some of the homilies, and she was concerned about uh, what party, what political party should the Catholic be a part of. On the one hand, she said, you know, we know that the Republicans seem to be good on the life issue, on the protection of the unborn, but not so good on migration and immigration and caring for the poor. On the other hand, she said the Democrats have been horrific in terms of supporting the nine-month right to abortion, but they seem to be right on protecting the stranger and caring for the poor. So what's our true home? 
And I think what Catherine and I came to see eventually in our conversation was there really is no true home politically for any Catholic Christian because there's no perfect party. You know, back in the 80s and 90s, there was a movement in the church. Um, Julie Lesh, I think, was the gal who first initiated it to create a whole third way, a third political party. And the name of that party would be Just Life. That life at every stage of its being should be protected. The in unborn child and the person on death row. The migrant who comes here illegally, as well as the person who's the poorest of the poor and the person who has all the money in the world. The person with a million degrees after their name and a person who's never been able to read. That every one of those people should be protected. And that the Catholic Church, to be what it is supposed to be, really can't be Republican or Democrat, but has to challenge both parties and all parties to just simply protect all life. I thank Catherine Hicks for our conversation, which was a reminder to me that partisan politics is always a risky business, but that our job is not to be particularly partisan. It is to challenge all parties to see that every life is sacred from womb to tomb, and that for us to be true to our Catholic Christian faith, we stand with no particular party. We stand with every party in challenging them to do a better job to make sure that God's gift of life is forever protected. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now with confidence in the goodness of God, who never gives up on us, let's offer him our petitions. Lord, hear our prayer. That the church, like the Virgin Mary, may bring Christ into the world with joy and be joined with him in endless life we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. That the assumption of Mary may awaken government leaders to the supreme dignity of each human life, which is called to the heights of heavenly glory, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all the mothers, that they may find in Mary the example and strength to carry out their vocation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer that those in our parish and family members who are ill may enjoy the consolation of the Lord and the presence of their loved ones, especially, especially Darry Lapari, Charles Barhol, Jack Carroll, Jim Gallagher, Jeannie Glessing, Mary Teresa Agolia, Joseph Agolia, James Campbell, Jr., Tory Kaplan, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Hazel Duncan, Bonaventure Gillespie, James Zaidi, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For the intention of this Mass, Helen Kedrish, Irene Romano, John Arardi, Danny Carson, whom we remember at this Eucharist. For the intention of all, we remember. Praise you. Amen. And let's say a few intentions if we can. I want to pray for those who are sick. I'm remembering especially today Peter Visconti, uh, Bill Kirschkoff. I pray as well for Margaret Lasanti and Doug and Mary Ohodo, for Barbara Turley. I pray for baby Emily Quart, for Barbara Truglio, for Mary Littris, Dorothy DeLisa, Veronica Tucker, and Thomas Lauer. I pray for Kevin Shields and Michael Cataldi, George Gill, Michael Cardone, Charlene Eisencraft. I pray for Noah Torelli, for Don and Jean Azevedo, Lori Lishan, Georgie Ritter, Al Clemente. I pray as well for my dear friend Angelo Clemente, 
I pray for Gary Hudson, for Jean Lucich Dwyer, Michael Campagna, Laura Elizabeth Steele, Anthony Posterino. I pray for Dennis Sweeney, and for my friend Vern, for Amelia Alaka, Rita Pizzi, Marilyn Segulo. Let me pray too as well for all of those who are addicted in any way, shape, or form for their freedom from addiction. We pray too for Steve Gagliardi, for Kevin Byron, for Byron DeMilo. We pray for John Rogers and Judy Crum. Pray for Tommy Burke, my grammar school classmate recovering from his stroke. I pray for Mary Lou Frisbee and Richard Ferrara. I pray for Robert Cummings. I pray as well for Brian Brown. I pray for Dorothy, uh, who's mom to Sheila Blanchard. I pray for Russell Castro Giovanni and Tom Cremens. Let me pray among the sick for Loretta Sweeney. I wanna pray as well for Henry Grayson, baby Henry, for John and Roseanne Simone, for Barbara Simone, for Don Spitali. I pray for Anthony Scotto and Jim Harmon and Judge Tony Falanga with Tony's upcoming surgery. I pray for Monsignor Maniscalco. I pray for Heidi Ignoski, for Tan Van Tutwiler. I pray for Cecilia Lasanti and Jose Cruz. I pray for my good friend, Vita D'Amico. I pray for Leanne Lasanti and Ron Citrano, for Jim Barr and Anthony Kremi, for Howie Pomerantz and Nancy Lang, again for Jack Carroll, for Joan Donovan, for Dean and Mirka McDonald, for Marilyn Arbogast and Nancy Palumbo and Pat McTaggart. I pray for Melissa Bergman. I pray for Ann Mindis and Matthew Edward Lewinsky and Nick Castellano. I pray for Jorge Clemente and Anthony Ponte and Joseph Sardone and Emma Nicole. Let me pray for those who are sick, including Marion Barone. I pray for Millie Bolando and Marie Tenay and Marlene Keenan, Bella Glauda and Bill Franca. I pray for Dennis M. Dowd, for Jennifer Murphy, for De Diane Pimonte, for Dennis Donovan, for uh, Jamie Scotto. I pray for uh, Father Frank Nelson, for John O'Brien. I pray for Carly Fragula. Um, and for all of our friends who are sick in any way, shape, or form, as well as for their caregivers. And then let me add those who have died. I want to pray for uh, Sophia Maglione, Nicholas Delario, for Pauline Agame. I pray for Bill Kelly, for Catherine and William Donovan, Richard Rose Marin, Billy and Michael Sarasoli, Lorraine and Ray Campbell, Nicholas and Sally Cordero, Corinne Locke. I pray for John, Maureen, and Ann Raber, Arlene Wolfarth, Mary and Ed Raber, Chuck DeHart, Joseph Monopoly, John Slade, for John and Alma Kappa and Fel Morali, for John Neeson and Michael Manzella, for Kenny Bolando, for Christina Formato, for Cynthia Prague, for Caroline Dodaro, Gaetano Sal and Angelo Emilo, Anthony Preziosi, Kevin Brown, Pauline Romano, Ed and June Jandovitz, Mary and Charlie Nobile, Linda Nobile O'Brien, Sam and Rose Pecora, I pray for Irene Romano and for Marjorie Geary. Among those who have died, I include Anne Marie Tenay, Billy Taylor, Monica Kerrison, Regina Robinson and Robbie Purick, Jimmy Saldo, Joan and John Donnelly, Henry Meyer and Richard Jackal. I pray for Barry Champney, for Colin and Tommy Ryan, Eleanor Mazzi, Monsignor Jack Alessandro, Brian Hussey, uh, his beautiful daughter Suzanne Scanio, Mary Rose and John Brosnan, Ronald Chapo, I pray for Leon Sherman Jr. and Marie Sicolo, and Kate Kelly, and Connie and Sal Cusimano, Norbert, Leo, Norbert Bobby Gomez. I pray for Ted Scorcia, for Monsignor Tom Spadaro, for Jerry Monk, for Vincent Castoria Jr. I pray for Dave Robin and Thomas O'Shea. For Matthew Torriello, for Marie Austin. I pray for Vito Palmieri, Emily LaFasso, Kathleen Smith, George Floyd, John Arturi, Raymond Kennedy, Connor and Will Robles. I pray for Mary Ann Hayes and Tommy Valva and Pat Cronin and Dominic Rosado. I wanna pray for James Patrick Sweeney, Father James Patrick Sweeney, the priest who baptized me. I wanna pray for Luigi Conti and Tracy Wachowski and Dale Louise Odom. I pray for Joe and Marian Bacigalupo, Elmer Schantz, Pat Sistar, Alex Haliasas, Marvin Klein, Peggy Barr, John McMacken, Jerry and Edward Casal. I pray as well for Judge Don Belfi, for Raymond Hussey. I wanna pray for Tino DiBello, for Nicholas Losanti, for Joseph Lukaszewski, for Ed Almer, for Father Ken Marks. I wanna pray for Paul Stashut. I wanna pray for Father Tim Hurton, for Gary and Mike Scorcia, for Marilyn Salonia, 
Nick Martone, Constance Polio, Jerry and Michael Pangallo, Captain Tim Murray, Dottie Lauer, Norma Calabrese, Bob Perez, John Glauda, Joseph Lovett, Marie Casavecchi, Carolyn Duval, Scotty and Nina Passarelli, Bob and Pat Caliban. I pray for Scott Pollock. I pray for Ronnie Bedix, Joe and Peggy Bauman, Tom Sully O'Sullivan. My dear friend Larry Hyde had asked me to pray for his nephew who passed away last week. And of course, Larry, we're keeping your whole family uh, in, in our prayers in remembering the loss of this young and, and wonderful nephew of yours. And uh, pray for all of our young people who have passed from this life to the next. For Peter Gannon, for Margaret and Katie O'Connor, for Tommy Englehart, for Victor and Lillian, for Bob and Margie, for Tom and Helen, for Varlo and Ethel. Pray for Edward Riker. It was mentioned before, young Danny Carlson, just a young boy, but someone who brought, very much in keeping with what I said about the gospel, great joy into the world, Danny Carlson. Luke Johnson, Marie Baranis, Evelyn Lalicki, P.J. O'Rourke, Frank Kilgannon, Robert and Joan Cook, Anna Gomes, Anna and Peter Canal, Paul Struzzieri, Leonardo Playa, Donato Forlenza, Aniela Ferrara, Marie Hoyecki, John Bolando Sr., Marion Harrington. I pray for Marie Gail Penny. Pray as well for Detective Anastasio Sacos, for Michael A. Diorio, for Captain John Robert Minatoli, for Louise McNeil, Lena Lasanti, Mary Uli. I pray as well for Genevieve Minatoli and Virginia Dennert. Pray for Florence Vago, for Joseph D. Martini, Pray for Luigi Conti. Pray for uh, Christopher Laybourne. Pray for Adina Placido. Pray for Helen Kadash. I pray as well for Anna Malandro. I pray for James Zidi, young man, 27 years old, will have his funeral tomorrow here at the parish. I uh, pray for Madeline Alari. And finally, uh, remembering Sister Mary Angela Buser, BVM, my old principal and dear friend. I want to pray too as well for all of our uh, first responders, our police, our firefighters, our EMTs. As always, I remember Thomas Scanio and Connell Asante, especially NYPD. Let me pray too for all of our men and women in the armed forces around the world. Let me pray for doctors and nurses who are fighting COVID and those trying to get the vaccination to as many as possible. We pray for an end to this terrible COVID. Uh, you know, which continues to afflict so many people around the world. Over 4 million people gone already and so many sick and still still fighting the illness. Um, so we pray for all of our special intentions. Uh, and I'd ask you to join me in closing this part of our prayer by once again giving over our intentions to our advocate in heaven, the mother of God, as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me, from all of my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice will be found acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands to the praise and the glory of his name for our good and the good of all his church. Lord, receive this offering of our service. You raise the Blessed Virgin Mary to the glory of heaven. By her prayers, help us always to seek you and to live always in your divine love. And we ask you to grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. With you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, who is our brother and our Lord. Today, the Virgin, the Mother of God, was taken up into heaven to be the beginning and the pattern of the church in its perfection and a sign of hope and comfort for your people on our pilgrim way. You would not allow decay to touch her body, 
For she had given birth to your son, the Lord of all life, in the glory of the incarnation. And so in our joy, we sing to your glory with all the choirs of angels in heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord, Lord God, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father, we acknowledge your greatness and all your actions show your wisdom and your love. You formed us in your own likeness and you set us over the whole world to serve you, our creator, and to rule over all creatures. And even when we disobeyed you and lost your friendship, you did not abandon us to the power of death, but helped all people to seek and to find you. Again and again, you offered a covenant to us and through the prophets taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you so love the world that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior. He was conceived through the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Blessed Virgin Mary, a man like us in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to those in sorrow joy. In fulfillment of your will he gave himself up to death, but by rising from the dead he destroyed death and restored life and that we might live no longer for ourselves but for him. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as his first gift to those who believe to complete his work on earth and to bring us the fullness of grace. Father, may this same Holy Spirit now bless and sanctify these offerings. Let them become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. He always loved those who were his own in the world, and when the time came for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, he showed the depth of that love. While they were at supper, Jesus took bread. He blessed the bread and broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, Jesus took a chalice filled with the fruit of the vine. Again, Father, he thanked you for your goodness, gave the chalice to his disciples and friends. And he said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption. We recall Christ's death, his descent among the dead, his resurrection, and his ascension to your right hand. And looking forward to his coming again in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the acceptable sacrifice which brings salvation to the whole world. Lord, look upon this sacrifice which you've given to your church, and by your Holy Spirit gather all who share this bread and wine into the one body of Christ, a living sacrifice of praise. Lord, remember those for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, along with all the bishops, the clergy, the religious, and all of God's people. Remember those who take part in this offering, those here present, and all your people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember those who have died in the peace of Christ, and all the dead whose faith is known to you alone. Father, in your mercy, grant also to us, your children, to enter into our heavenly inheritance in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, in the company, too, of her beloved spouse, St. Joseph, and all your apostles and saints. And then, in your kingdom, freed from the corruption of sin and death, we shall sing your glory with every creature through Christ our Lord, through whom you give us everything that is good. For it is through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory, all honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer, and as we do, Pray that like Mary, we will always have the strength and hope to be joyous and to share that hope with others. Let us say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you my peace, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live and reign. One God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, with faith in your love and mercy, we eat your body and drink your blood. Let it not bring us condemnation, but health in mind and in body. My friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to share in everlasting life. Our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Every diocese has its own rules, so I'm, I'm just saying what's going on in my diocese, which is the diocese of Rockville Center, Long Island, New York. But today is the day that the, uh, the freedom to not go to Mass is lifted, and uh, we're supposed to get back to church. So I'm encouraging you all, wherever you may be, to think about getting back to uh, your own parish church and keep on watching us here. Uh, we always love having you at the Mass, and I know so many of you say to me, I go to my parish now, but I also watch the Mass at Our Lady of Lourdes, and that's wonderful. We love having you. But it's, it's time, if you feel up to it, to get back to worship in our parishes. And uh, coupled with that, of course, I hope that when you go back, it's because you also know you're a little safer with the vaccination. And I'm still running into too many people who have a million reasons for not getting the vaccination. Uh, I just go with uh, Pope Francis, you know. There are many ways to be pro-life, but one of the ways to be pro-life is to make sure you don't receive or spread this god-awful virus that has taken so many lives and damaged so many people. So I'm asking you to think seriously if you haven't gotten the vaccination of getting it. And if you have the vaccination, then please think about coming back to Mass. And uh, in terms of the mask, uh, some people wear it in our church, some people don't. With the spike because of the uh, Delta variant, I guess some people feel it's a better thing to do. You can choose to do what you want with that in terms of wearing a mask or not. But I don't think we have much choice when it comes to the, uh, the vaccination. We're really in so many ways mandated morally to protect the world from this god-awful virus and to get, the, uh, to get the vaccination. So please do that. But most importantly, think about going back to your church. I know some of you who are, are watching a mass like this are still uncomfortable, you know, and I understand that. And, uh, but if you can, overcome that fear and come on back because we, we miss you. Uh, all over the country, pastors are saying the same thing to me. We're looking forward to the day when our churches have the same people in or maybe even more than we had before this god-awful pandemic began. And let's, as always, entrust 
this world and the sickness in this world to our Blessed Mother that the whole COVID uh, terrible pandemic might finally be eradicated from our planet. As always, it is my, my way to mention, please go to YouTube and watch Personally Speaking with Monsignor Jim Lasanti. If you've got a chance to watch this weekend, uh, you're watching uh, Marie Osmond, you know, of Donnie and Marie, and she's great. It was a great interview. Talks about her faith and the values that sustain her. Uh, she's wonderful. Marie Osmond's our guest this week. Next weekend, it's Amanda Klutz, who's on the talk on television, but more importantly, has given us a, a great detailed explanation, both in a book and in her uh, online presence of the uh, battle with COVID and the loss of her husband, Nick Cordero, who held on for a long time in fighting the, uh, the uh, terrible virus and ultimately uh, did pass away. And she talks about what it means for her as a widow and what it means for her little two-year-old son, Elvis, now that his dad has gone. But she's wonderful. Amanda Klutz is next weekend. And then finally after that, George Chikiris, who won the Oscar for Best Supporting Actor in 1962 by playing Bernardo in the, the wonderful movie, The West Side Story, and he was great. He's 86 years old, but he's sharp, and he's a man of great culture and faith. So he comes up next, George Chikiris. Please tune in, Personally Speaking, with Monsignor Jim Lasanti on YouTube, or you can listen to us on the Catholic Channel on Sirius XM. Let's pray. Lord and God, may we who receive this sacrament of salvation be led to the glory of heaven by the prayers of the Blessed Virgin Mary assumed in heaven to be with her son. And we ask all of this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you and your families in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Heaven and earth is our life.